Thanks for watching the Real Solar Cars channel. A while ago I was watching a video from Innovative Sustainable Solutions and saw a comment reference this uh, video about a solar charging system on a smart car. Here's a edited version of it. I will use super capacitors. They have a 1 million cycles. Let's switch to the green energy. We had all of the parts necessary to test the system out, including a bank of super capacitors and an electric vehicle with a 400 watt solar array. So that is the same wattage as shown in the video. I'll run the video of the t actual test at the end because the towards the end of the test the quality of the video is not as good as I would like. You know, I went through the video and collected voltage measurements when I could and t time of all the important events. So I connect the, the vehicle and it starts charging and charges for 47 seconds before I interrupt the charging due to low voltage on the capacitors. Then it recharges. It takes about four minutes to recharge. And then transfers energy from the capacitors to the vehicle again for 52 seconds. Now I did run the, see I stopped at about 11 volts the first test and 10.5 the second test. Here is a plot of voltage versus time. You can see the discharge and recharge. And basically about here the rate of charge of the supercapacitor bank slows significantly. And we noticed that that was due to excess of resistance in a fuse holder on that connected the charge controller to the supercapacitors. So potentially like if we were to correct that problem that it would be able to recharge in only three minutes instead of four. So here is another copy of the timing results. We find that it take that a complete charge and discharge cycle of the supercapacitors takes four minutes. That works out to be 15 cycles per hour. And assuming the charger operates for eight hours per day, that is 120 cycles per day on the supercapacitors. Now that becomes a problem because every time the charger cycles on and off, the contactors in the electric vehicle will open and close. So then here we find that using a system with supercapacitors that we would be cycling the contactors in our vehicle almost 45,000 times in one year. So looking up the data sheet for the contactors in the Chevy Volt, they are rated to a mechanical lifespan of 200,000 cycles and an electrical lifespan at full load of 3,000. So going off the higher mechanical number because they should be operating at no load or very light load, you see a significant wear on the contactors in only four and a half years. So, so basically this super capacitor charging setup is unacceptable and you know indeed like you know we could have been charging our vehicle a year sooner or so if we had done this but have to look at the big picture and not wear out the contactors because the 
work and expense involved in replacing the worn out contactors would counteract any electrical power saved during the, those years. Let's look at the cost of supercapacitors. Now, our supercapacitors were bought surplus at a much lower cost than this, but assuming that you, if you wanted to sell this as a commercial product, you would need to buy new supercapacitors. And here we find that comparable capacitors are almost $60 each, making the supercapacitor bank cost $350 a significant amount of cost for the system. There's another option we could use for a similar price, lithium titanate batteries. They also cost about $60 per cell and we would need six cells to build a 12 volt pack. This pack would hold 483 watt hours of energy. If we operate at an 80% dis charge cycle, that gives us 386 watt hours of usable energy. So my open EVSC can be set to signal 6 amps to the vehicle, but in practice it seems like the vehicle continue, will charge at about 6.5 amps at its lowest charging rate. It's out to be a little bit over 850 watts of DC 12 volt power required to charge the vehicle. We may not fairly optimistic 300 watt output from the photovoltaic panels. The pack would recharge in an hour and 20 minutes and take 40 minutes to discharge. And that is di discharging with 300 watts of photovoltaic energy going directly from the panels to the inverter and not going through the battery. So then that works out to be two hours per charge cycle. And assuming the same eight hours a day of charging, that is four charging cycles per day, that is not unreasonable, I would say. And works out to be 1,500 charging cycles per year. The mechanical lifespan of the contactors would be 135 years, so that's the life of the vehicle. But we also have to be concerned about the cycle life of this uh, lithium titanate battery. Now a lithium titanate battery has a rated charge cycle life of 20,000 cycles, so that works out to be 13 years. Now hopefully it will continue to deliver usable capacity past that for the lifespan of the vehicle. In conclusion, using supercapacitors to charge your electric vehicle is not a very good idea because supercapacitors don't hold that much energy. And lithium titanate batteries are about the same cost as supercapacitors and hold much more energy, making a, an off-grid charging system with a small buffer battery a reasonable proposition. Now, now I'm going to run the footage of the actual uh, supercapacitor charging experiment. So whether or not you continue to on to watch that, thanks for watching and please consider subscribing. Five point six point six amps charging the vehicle. Capacitor voltage is dropping rapidly.
Here, so I'll pause the charging to uh, let the capacitors recharge. Of course, this clamp meter needs to be re zeroed constantly. Fourteen point five amps on there, twelve point eight on here. Once the capacitor is charged back up to 14 volts, then we can charge a little more. Other meter. It seems like I got a lot of resistance in my uh, 12 volt circuit because about 14.3 volts at the charge controller, 13.8 at the capacitors, and so what's the current? 5.9 amps. 4.7 on this meter okay, well time to resume charging Well, maybe I'll just... Um, well, 
Yeah, I think that's the inverter. Um, so, you know, you're able to charge for like almost one minute on the energy stored in these supercapacitors. So these are rated 2600 farads each. But with six in series and then two in two sets in parallel. So that'd be 433 farads on each bank.